Yeah, so with that, uh, we're going to spend the next 20, uh, 15 minutes or so to do another um, derivation exercise. So you will see that in this case, we are having a um, Poisson model. Okay? And I actually write out, so it's on Moodle as well, uh, if you have your computer, if you want, but I show you what the um, Poisson distribution, which is the data model is like. So Poisson distribution, if you learn it in the past, is very useful for a um, count to model count variable. Okay? And we have, uh, it is a one parameter model, which um, is the state theta over here. So we have the density function, discrete density function over here uh, for you for the Poisson. And then what we're gonna do is the Poisson model actually, if I'm focusing on the parameter theta, uh, gamma function, uh, gamma distribution, which we just covered um, for the C as well, it is a conjugate prior for that theta. Okay, so I show you again the gamma density. So this should be the how you're gonna get your likelihood. This is how you're gonna get your prior. And I'm asking you to spend the time to work on some of the details about how to derive the posterior distribution of theta, which should be another gamma. Okay, so what I'm saying is, which is I'm listing everything here for you so you know the general procedure, okay? I have a prior gamma AB for my theta, and then I have my joint likelihood, which eventually should give me my L theta. And then eventually you should be able to derive using Bayes' rule of its posterior to be another gamma of these two terms. So this is another exercise, hopefully, uh, the more the better, so you know how different con uh, how different configurations, how different situations, um, things arrive, and then how you are able to get to the final answer. Um, so we have a prior, we have a data model, and I'm asking you to attempt to derive the posterior um, of this conjugate distribution. Okay, so let me show you the whole picture. So at the top you have the sampling model for the Poisson. And then in the middle, you have the gamma density for the prior. And then the rest is for you to fill out the form or on your notebook, just write it all step by step. And I'm sure given what we have covered so far, as long as you have enough time and then looking at the details and do everything carefully, you should be able to arrive at this posterior gamma. It is not something very complicated, but it definitely gives us another chance to, to do the practice. So I'm gonna pause here. I'll let you work on this and then we will show the results together. Okay, yeah, so we got a few questions about, I guess the expression of Hassan and everything, uh, which is totally fine. We're not as familiar. Uh, so first of all, the prior, I guess is straightforward. Uh, since I listed in this order, so let me do the prior first and then uh, we'll do the likelihood together and then give you a few more minutes to get the posterior. Okay, so the prior uh, theta follows a gamma AB. So according to, uh, the density, I know my pi theta should be b to the power of a, gamma a, and then theta to the power of a minus one, and then in the exponent, negative b times theta, okay? So that should be straightforward, okay? So I know a lot of questions about the, the likelihood part. So let's first get the joint. Um, yeah, actually I should write something different, PMF, because it's a discrete distribution. Um, all right, so the joint of y1 through yn given theta, and eventually it's gonna be, we write it as a likelihood L theta. Um, so let's do it step by step. So we know that they're IID. Um, so we're gonna have the big product, okay? And uh, according to the Poisson at the top over here, so here Poisson is generic, is for any y, uh, but right now we're working with different yi. So what you need to do is theta to the power of yi, and then the exponent is only negative theta, okay? And then it's divided by yi factorial, okay? So I know this notation because they were trying to do it one line so it can get a little bit confusing, uh, but what this PMF is, theta to the power of yi in the exponent will just be negative theta and then divided by yi factorial. So um, let's do one more step and give you the time to do the posterior. So. This is everything um, being producting, okay? So if I expand the terms a little bit more in the denominator, I have all of the yi factorial being multiplying together. 
on the top. Uh, what's special here, because it's theta to the power of yi, and then we're producting all of the different yi. So in the power, it is a summation, because we're multiplying all of them, but then in the power is the sum. And then we're doing the exponent of negative theta for n times. So that will just be negative n theta. All right, so that will be uh, what we need to know and some clarification. I know the notation might not be as most uh, straightforward, uh, but the rest now I think is trying to do the derivation for the posterior, which is the product of the prior and the likelihood. And eventually don't bother about all of those constants, throw them away, but only work with everything about theta and try to recognize it as another gamma. Anyone got it working? Okay. Yeah, some nodding. Great. Yeah. So like I said, we just saw an example of that gamma and uh, gamma overall is not that hard to work with because it's going to be the parameter raised to some power minus one. And then in the exponent, some negative terms times that parameter. So those will be the two things that you're going to recognize eventually. Um, so we'll do that together at the bottom here. I hope I have enough space. Um, so by the way, Abigail pointed out here it should be a proportional sign instead of equation. Uh, because we are doing the um, proportional version. Um, so I'm going to write accordingly, which as we know is going to be the product. Okay, so first of all, I guess it's always good to throw away those constants first. So I don't need to deal with b to the power of a, gamma a, and also the complicated product of all of the factorial, they can go away as well because it's a constant according to what we know, because everything should be only about theta. Theta is the only parameter here. So what we have, we're going to have theta to the power of a plus the sum of yi minus one. And then in the exponent, we have negative b plus n times theta. And just like what we did before, at this point, we should be able to recognize the new a is a plus sum of y. Okay? And the new b is b plus n. And then that is why we get a gamma a uh, and yeah a plus sum of y as the first parameter and then b plus n as the second parameter. So this one is probably even easier than what we did for the normal case, and this is a commonly used conjugate result that if I'm working with count variables, and if I assume a Poisson distribution, a data model for it for them. Then if I give a gamma prior to the uh, parameter theta, I will arrive at a gamma posterior because it's conjugate. So that's the main part for, for doing the derivation. And then of course, there are some other stuff, like say, for example, in item four, I show you um, once again that the posterior mean is the weighted average of the prior mean and the sample mean. Okay, so this could be handy. I know. Homework two, I have one question for you to show that for the beta case. Okay, so you can come to here. if You want to get some hint about how to show that. Uh, but nevertheless, you can see that it is a weighted average, just like in the mean, uh, in the mu case with the normal and like here with the gamma Poisson and then with the beta binomial, that's what we saw as well. Okay. Prediction, okay. So remember, because now we have a posterior distribution of gamma, so what you need to do is you need to generate a posterior draw from this gamma. And then you're going to generate a new y tilde from the Poisson because that's the data model given your theta. Okay. So in practice, in R, this is what you're going to do. And for us, it's just important to go through the process. If I'm trying to make a new prediction of a new data point y, y tilde, I need to first of all generate a posterior draw of theta from its posterior distribution, which a sum of y, b, and n are given to you. And then from there, so step one, and then step two, once I get my theta tilde, theta tilde from, from the um, posterior draw, I will be able to get a new draw of my y tilde. Y tilde and don't forget it's about the Poisson. Okay. Okay, makes sense, yeah. So I mean, to, to connect to what we did before for P, if you remember, if I'm doing it for the beta binomial, I need to uh, get it from a beta, uh, what was it? 
a plus y, I think, and then b plus m minus y, right? That was the posterior derivation that we did before. And then if I want to generate a new draw of the data point, my binomial is the data model. So I need to generate it from my p tilde. Okay. So just like that, we're doing this for, uh, for the gamma Poisson case. And then in lab two, you will get to do that for the normal, normal case that we did for chapter eight. Okay, okay. So like I said, this is another exercise and also an example of conjugate prior and derivation of the posterior process. And um, this is a new setting for many of you. Um, so our expectation like this will be that if I give you a new setting, you should be able to follow the Bayes rule definition as well as the derivation process to arrive at a posterior. So of course, the prior distribution might be different, the data model might be different, but at the end of the day, you have your prior, you have your likelihood, combine them, you should arrive at your posterior.